begin. We have Maxi and Nibiru. We have to use Nibiru before they get out a card that can negate it, like Apollo USA, or more notably would be their Baron to Floor, which they do summon quite early. So we are just completely ending our turn. So what you generally could be doing here is we could have searched for a booster. We could have then boosted it onto the field, and then we could have made a Baguska, but that would be draw two. Give your opponent draw two, plus you make a Baguska. We decided that was not worth it because we have Maxi and DD Crow, which should hopefully give us enough to survive the next turn. Let's see. Maxi in the draw phase, but off the top of the deck, we draw into a cross out designate. Negate. DD Crow against Infernoble. DD Crowing the Charles in the graveyard when you try to equip it, is that going to be a relevant choke point? Let's see when we want a DD Crow. Ogier sending a Renan from the deck to the grave. Uh, I think DD Crowing a Turpin from the graveyard would be big. Joy Use adding the Renan in the graveyard back to the hand, which would special summon itself onto the field, which would then be going into the I Sold, is being stopped. I Sold is the main combo, a card that was banned in the TCG due to being so powerful. It could summon any warrior from the deck, and uh, we rightfully stopped it. Very well done. We are going to be solely reliant on Nibiru. So can we play through Nibiru? We're on summon number two. Grabbing a motorbike from the deck to our hand. Motorbike sets up a Baron to Floor Negate, which will be able to stop that Nibiru play. But can we get it out on the fifth summon? We're on summon number three. Two more summons. So we can't do it. We are not going to be able to summon a Baron to Floor before the Nibiru. We're on summon number four. Now Excel Synchro Stardust. This is going to be summon number five. And you could be asking, do I Nibiru here? It depends. That's the actual answer, because if you wait for the tuner to be summoned and they play Stardust Dragon, which a lot of people are not playing, they could chain to your Nibiru, not negating your Nibiru, but they could summon an, an unaffected Baron to floor from your Nibiru. But I think mostly uh, it's probably better to just wait because he's not playing Stardust, right? No Stardust, but no one's playing Stardust. Uh, initially, a lot of people were playing it, but then we realized how good other cards are in the action deck. The action deck space in Super Heavy Samurai is quite tight. So right here, right now, we're going to be chaining Maxi to the Nibiru. Now, Nibiru does not summon at the same time as the token. It summons itself, then summons a token, thus Maxi's draw two. Pod agreed on that Maxi. Drawing a driver and a tunneler. Those were not good draws here, unfortunately. We have Peacemaker tributing to special summon our scales. Scales are reborn, a monster from the graveyard, further going into our Ballista. Now, the Soul Piercer, every time it sends the grave, more than once per turn, it keeps on activating. This is why the card is limited to one in OCG, and the uh, reason why the card could maybe get hit on a newer ban list that could be coming soon. If it weren't for Snake Eyes, I'd be saying that Soul Piercer is definitely getting limited, but because Snake Eyes exists, the deck may just not get hit. Doing a big fat pendulum summon, reducing the Nibiru to zero attack. This is turn three. We do have the attack. 3,400 damage on the field so far. We're locking ourselves into Super Heavy Samurai Monsters only by activating the Wakashi to summon from the deck. This is a Masu Waru, putting our field at 6,400 damage. Equipped with the Soul Horns, giving us the ability to attack twice. Double 8,000 for game. Now, did we have game if we put Nibiru in defense? Nibiru's got a small D. At 600, the Apollo could have swung over it, then we still had game. So attacker defense, it did not matter for that duel. So Morsaki, top tier player, meta weekly winner here, playing against Nibiru. We're gonna be looking at the hand. We can't destroy the Nibiru, unfortunately. We are on summon number three, but we know that there's Nibiru, we saw it. So this is not a surprise. We're playing right into it. Ogier targeting the Angelica, which we could have chain link blocked the Ogier doing so by chaining Nibiru, then she would not be able to activate. She is going to send a monster from the deck to the grave and summon a from the extra deck a Roland. Roland is here. We're gonna Makanko Fire Dance reborn our Ha Ray from the graveyard, and just like that, what is our disruptions? We have zero disruption 
The Ha Ray is indestructible and uh, by battle and card effect, and that's pretty much all we have for protection. We do have Maxi, of course. We did not Maxi the normal summon of the Soul Piercer. Okay, we want them to commit to a special summon first. We want to guarantee that we're going to be able to draw, maybe. Now, Angelica being the direct chain link to something targeting her, will be able to use her effect to banish to then summon the Roland if we have another one. Some people play two Roland, a lot of people play just one, so I would not be, I think to activate it, you do have to have a Roland to even summon, right? Is it optional to summon? I think it's optional to summon. You could send and then, yeah, it's optional. So as long as we have a monster sent from the deck to the grave, Promethean popping on summon, goodbye to the Scarecrow. We are also playing against Max C here. What can we do? Now, this is not turning into disruption. This is not triggering any pops here. Okay, we're setting up our Pendulum Scale, a special summon of Rakashi. Ha Ray being equipped, searching for an equip card. Again, no disruption. Our only disruption was the Promethean Princess. So I said we had no disruption. We did have the Promethean Princess hiding in the graveyard here. Special summoning our Soul Horns. <laughs> we just drew into our own Nibiru. When do we Nibiru? Right before they could summon something like an Apollo USA, which they can't do here. Now, the Excel Synchro Stardust again. We want to, right before they make the Baron to floor, on the resolution of summoning the level two tuner, if we're confident that they don't play Stardust Dragon, that's when we want to Nibiru. Because otherwise, Baron to floor is gonna be coming. We can't Nibiru, oh my gosh, we can't Nibiru because our Promethean Princess. You can only summon fire monsters. Our Promethean screwed us. Do we have a way to deal with our own Promethean? We don't, we cannot Nibiru. Uh-oh. That's not good. Promethean killed us. Was, uh, it, if we did not Promethean, but was it a mistake to summon Promethean? We didn't know we were gonna draw Nibiru. I, I don't know, it was in the deck. We drew it after summoning the Promethean. Oh my gosh. Ash is, this is the ideal Ash. Ashing, well, uh, this then makes it so the Baron of Floor will not be able to negate the Nibiru that we still can't freaking summon. <laughs> Damn. So this is why uh, people say, when should you ash? You should be ashing Peacemaker. It's the ideal time to ash, but you normally can't do so because they have a Baron to floor protecting that place. So it is kind of incorrect to tell people to ash the Peacemaker because you really can't do it. Reborn, Piercer from the graveyard. <laughs> what do we do? By the time they go to battle, we can't summon Nibiru during the battle phase. We could hope that Baron to floor activates to destroy our Promethean Princess for no reason whatsoever. We do have an indestructible Ha Ray, by the way. So what do we do there? Uh, as long as we are equipped, we cannot be destroyed by battle. And if we're equipped with the Makanko card specifically, we cannot be destroyed by card effect. So a double equip, well, we could be targeted by the Unicorn. We could be spun back in the deck here. Ha Ray is now gonna be spun, definitely. It is, un it is targetable. Took out the token, left, leaving up the Promethean Princess. 8,000 damage on the field with a Nibiru in our hand that we could not even summon due to drawing it after we summoned Promethean locking us in a fire only. Damn. Another way Promethean Princess could screw you is if you have a Masquerina. I see a lot of people do this uh, by accident online if they're not playing correctly with Snake Eyes. They'll use their Promethean Princess for getting to activate their Masquerina. And then with Promethean on the field, they're like, oh wait, my Masquerina can't summon Apollo. It can only summon a freaking Hita. We have the, oh my gosh, like this is the one turn kill hand. It, like first turn kill, you have Thubin plus the Ben 10, GG no re, but we have Ash negating the effect of its summon that will still trigger the Ben 10 to grab a Light Fairy from the deck. And when the Drytron activates while in the graveyard, that is when you chain your Bestial to banish it. So you also cannot chain the Jurassorm if there's no body on the field. Grabbing Diviner, Diviner send Herald, Herald searching for a ritual spell, a ritual monster, grabbing our Medionis Drytron. We're gonna be fusing, using the Ben 10 from the graveyard, discarding, attributing the Thubin that is. This could be a rank six succeed, going into the Beatrice, sending any card from the deck to the grave, anything, which will be our Drytron Gamma, which we are going to be banishing from the graveyard before it activated. We should have waited for the activation, but uh, that's okay. Well, you know, no, 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 actually stopping the Ben 10 from being tributed. I think that was a good idea, uh, banishing it early for this situation. Did Ben 10 search Ben 10? We knew that Ben 10 was in the hand, right? We uh, added, yeah, we, we Ben 10 added Ben 10. So to stop the tribute of the other Ben 10 to grab another Light Fairy, we banish it early. Sure, I agree. We're going to send an Ava from the deck to the grave during the opponent's turn. 
Banishing up to two cards to grab a Herald of Orange Light with the ability to monster negate. This card also got limited to one. Maybe it could become unlimited again. And now you're under max C, plus we have our monster negate. Using our monster negate onto the Blazing Cartesia effect to fusion summon. Negate. All right, we still have Ash. Ash for the branded fusion. That's not a branded fusion. We have branded in white. Using with at least one dragon to make a Moo Dragon, making our monsters untargetable here. We have Green Light, which is the ability to negate a spell. So if they activate the Fusion Deployment or Branded Fusion, we negate. Tragedy grabbing the Alubur. Alubur, we have already used up our normal summon, so that is not going to be a play we can make. And the Fusion Deployment is, uh, you know, uh, yeah, we're not doing anything with that. Okay. But we do have... The Thubin in the graveyard. This is when you would activate your Bistial, tributing our Ben 10, adding a Diviner with the effect of the Ben 10 as the Thubin adds a Ben 10. We are sending the Herald to then grab a Herald of Ultimateness with the ability to negate anything, grabbing the Ritual Spell in the graveyard back to our hand, linking off into Link Karibo to get the Thubin into the graveyard, then ending our turn. Uh... We uh, could not get Ultimatus out. Okay. Negate the spell with Herald of Green Light. A time? A time? Didn't have any Drytrons. What? I, I, you know, the Minos Drytron, this could be used to Ritual Summon from your hand or graveyard. Couldn't we? Uh, we could send the Ultimateness to Reborn, right? And then we could use the Meteonis Drytron to summon the Herald of Ultimateness. But we wouldn't have a lot of fairies in the hand anyway. The ultimateness is only a really good summon if we have a lot of fairies to then discard to negate. Can't 2,000 attack? What do you mean? We can't summon... Uh, we send Thubin, right? If, but we already Thubined. Thubin was on the field for Link Kribo instead. So I, I was summoning Link Kribo a mistake. Setting up the brand fusion into our back row to be used during the next turn. Get ready. We have Thubin sending the ultimateness, which we could then use the Meteor Strytron to summon the Herald of Ultimate. This is what I was talking about. But I think we already activated the Thubin so we couldn't make this play. This is what we're doing. There we go. Ultimateness is here. Per fairy we have in the hand, we have that many negates. But it can't negate Super Polymerization fusing with it. That's a big problem. Cartesia recycling itself in the graveyard back to our hand. The turn a fusion was sent to the grave. We did not save called by for the end phase to negate it. We only have one negate with the ultimateness. Not that ultimate. Chain negate the Albaz attempting to fuse with the ultimateness, and that's it. We have no more negates. <laughs> that's not good. Because you negated the Albaz, which you had to, we can now safely use our branded fusion. We are going to be activating the Albion, not chaining called by onto Albaz because there's more than one Albaz in the graveyard, so it wouldn't be a smart thing to do. But called by the graving onto Lubellion could have maybe been a good play here, stopping it from being summoned. You can't chain to its activation because it does not activate in the grave. We do have Nibiru though, so do get ready for that. Using the Brand Beast to pop that back row card, we are now going to be activating that call by the grave to banish the Albion as we chain, banish the Herald of Perfection Ultimateness off of the field. 4,800 damage in the field, and I don't think we have enough summons to Nibiru. Is this the end? Goodbye to the Albion. To battle we go. And that's it. It's over. <laughs> 4,800 damage. Just like that. Let's take this into a game two and uh, let's see maybe Drytron cooking. Alubur on summon. You do not want the Alubur to eat your ash. You want to save yourself for the branded fusion. That is when we negate with our ash. Negate. Now, that makes our Thrust activatable to set a Fusion Duplication into the back row. We could add back the Branded Fusion with Retribution, but that would not be a good play here. We're going to be using the Branded in High Spirits, grabbing a Cartesia from the deck, Serenir being triggered to send a Branded Lost from the deck to the Grave, using Retribution to add from the Graveyard our Branded Lost. This is correct. Not adding Branded Fusion. Now we set up with the Duplication. Now, there's a weird ruling here. The duplication will trigger the loss to search your deck for something like Mercoria for a monster negate. But the duplication is not a few, uh, it's not a true fusion card. Because it's a fake fusion card, the lost protection on fusion summon of your opponent not being able to chain anything, you don't get that protection. 
because it was not some it wasn't fusion summoned this way an activation of a card that includes the effect of fusion summon so you don't get that protection because nowhere on the card does it say fusion summon do you understand that all right let's go titan clad summoning a quem from the deck on summon send an albas from the deck to the grave you don't understand well uh don't worry about it anyway pot of p banishing just three as we chain our duplication which we would have made our loss miss the timing anyway if it did work, which it doesn't work anyway. The loss will still activate to search, though. That does not miss the timing. Albion is now going to be able to special summon two monsters from either player's graveyard. So if you activate a Drytron effect in the grave to summon, you then chain the Sanctifier to steal it. Uh, I don't. Is it summonable that way? I don't think so. No, it actually can't be summoned through the Albion. Drytron Nova summoning from the deck of Drytron. We have Ash negating the Maxi, Mercurier negating the Ash, Call by the Grave fingering the Mercurier, dodging the finger with Albion by summoning the Mercurier back in the field, chaining Droplet to negate the Albion, which is untargetable, trying to stop the finger from fingering the Mercurier. Ain't no way. Chain Link 7, negate. And the finger goes through. Fingering that Mercurier and banishing that we attempt to dodge the finger with the Albion with, which was untargetable, so it could have only been stopped by a card like Droplet. And the Ash successfully negates that Maxi. Damn. We finally have our Thuban here. So we're gonna use the Zeta to tribute the Thuban. Zeta could grab a ritual spell. The Thuban could grab a ritual monster. So that is the combo as we now grab our Ben 10. And, uh,. You know, Drytrons be Drytronin. 2-0.